one of the most exciting parts of getting to Mars is the landing sequence. It's been said that the Mars atmosphere is too thin to be useful, but too thick to ignore. Meaning it heats the spacecraft up by friction, but it doesn't slow it down. The spacecraft must hit the atmosphere at just the right angle, hit the atmosphere too shallow, and the vehicle skips off into space like a stone skipping over water. Hit the atmosphere too steep, and it burns up like a meteor. It's a landing sequence that worked for Perseverance's predecessor, the Curiosity rover, in 2012. It strikes the air at over 13,000 miles per hour. Friction from the air burns the heat shield with temperatures reaching 2,100 degrees centigrade. That's 3,800 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's heating up, heating up, heating up, and finally it gets to a portion of the atmosphere where the atmosphere actually acts to slow down that spacecraft. That's when the parachute deploys. It's very shortly after the heavy heat shield, which has protected it from the heat, drops away. So with that parachute out, and it's a supersonic deploy, and it's also one of the riskier parts of the mission, you don't want that parachute to tear. And then what happens is the radar starts to see where we are relative to the ground. The rover and its descent stage detach from the parachute. The descent stage is called a sky crane. It takes over the landing and fires its engines. As it descends, the rover takes pictures of the ground. Its onboard computer rapidly compares the images with pictures stored in its database. This computer lines up features it sees in the new photos with features cataloged in its database. If the rover is descending toward dangerous ground, it can change direction and move toward a safer place to land. It slows, hovers, and then lowers via sky crane the rover on the edge of this tether. When contact is sensed with the ground, that tether is cut, that descent stage flies away, and the rover falls what should be no more than a meter to hit the surface, but gently. For a few minutes, the spacecraft descending toward the ground will not be able to communicate with Earth. As with the Curiosity rover, people might remember the seven minutes of terror. We're gonna have a similar period of communications blackout because it just takes time for that radio signal to go from Earth to Mars, Mars to Earth. But we're gonna have that period where it will have happened on Mars. The rover will have landed or it will have crashed and we will not know until that signal gets back. There's those minutes of blackout are some of the most heart-pounding moments as you wait to see what happened with the spacecraft. Perseverance is now ready for its mission. As the expression goes, to seek out life and boldly go where no one has gone before. To do this, Perseverance is armed with a phalanx of seven instruments and 23 cameras that address questions about life in the past, in the present, and the future. The rover will be able to identify chemical elements on the Martian soil, as well as organics and minerals that may be signs of past microbial life. The latest in camera technology can resolve features as small as a grain of salt. If something ever lived here, Perseverance can find evidence of it. A drill shares the turret with the scientific instruments. The drill can bore holes and extract core samples a half inch wide and 2.4 inches long. This is the system that allows us to take core samples of rocky material on the surface of Mars carefully seal them in very sterile, clean vessels for eventual return to Earth. Once the sample is collected, Perseverance can store the sample in a revolving chamber located inside the rover. This chamber 
is called the sample cache, and it has storage for 47 empty tubes available. Here, the samples are hermetically sealed. No contaminants from the rover will ever enter the tubes, and nothing can escape them. At some point yet to be determined in the future, a site will be chosen where the sample cache will be deposited. This will become a depot. Perseverance will spend the rest of its mission bringing sample tubes to the depot. A future mission will collect the cache and bring the samples back to Earth. This makes Perseverance the first part of a sample return mission. I think we have a lot to learn, life or no life, about the evolution of our solar system, about our planet, by looking in depth at rocks brought back from Mars.